everybody, Fiber Spider back again in the kitchen once again. Yes, I have been enjoying these cooking videos oh so much. And the last one was my four ingredient peanut butter cookie recipe, which I, I still have some cookies left over and I absolutely love, love, love how that came out. Now, on that video, one of the key ingredients was bisquick and i got so many comments saying either a what is bisquick or b that's great but we don't have it where i live <laughs> um and i thought hmm yeah i can see how that would be a bit of a problem yeah so out of curiosity uh, and out of my love of you guys, uh, I did a little bit of research and I found a lot of do-it-yourself Bisquick recipes online. And a lot of them were very similar to each other. There were, of course, variations of, you know, the, the different recipes and so forth. But what they had in common was all-purpose flour baking powder, yes, baking powder, um, <laughs> salt, and some sort of fat content. And sometimes it was either calling for butter or lard or vegetable uh, shortening. Yeah, that's pretty much what Bisquick amounts to. So I thought it would be interesting to do a bit of a challenge to see how traditional Bisquick measures up with DIY Bisquick. So, I still have my handy dandy box right here. Now, for scientific purposes, we are going to do the simplest Bisquick recipe that I could find, which is quite simply biscuits. Yes, because it's Bisquick mix and milk. That's it. You know, I want it to go very, very, very simple because that way we're not having all these competing flavors coming into play. Um, it's just Bisquick and milk. That's it. Um, and this recipe is on the back of the box. So it's two and a quarter cups of original Bisquick baking mix and two thirds of a cup of milk. Okay. So we are going to make the traditional Bisquick biscuits, and then we're gonna do a batch of DIY Bisquick biscuits and compare and contrast, you know, is it a good substitute or not? We will find out. Um, as far as the different factors that come into play, cost, I'm not even counting cost because you could get stuff on discount or coupons or that sort of thing. So not so much about the cost, more about the the the, the quality and the, the taste and that sort of thing. That is what we're focusing on. Mm. So without further ado, let's get started. Alrighty, so we're going to start with the traditional Bisquick biscuits first. So it's going to be two and a quarter cups. Got my little measuring cups right here. And I didn't have any milk, quite frankly, because I don't drink it. I only use half and half with my coffee. So we are gonna be using half and half, which I'm gonna be using for both recipes. So there you go. And I should probably be sifting this, but eh. Okay, one. And almost two right off the bat. Okay. 
there we go, two, and a quarter. This poor little guy, he got melted, but I know he's still a quarter of a cup. I didn't do it. Somebody left it in the dishwasher, not in the top rack, and it went all over the place and it ended up getting melted. I didn't do it, I promise you. It wasn't me. <laughs> okay, there we go. And I am making a sufficient mess. Awesome. Okay, groovy. All right, so. And I still have all this left over from my peanut butter cookies. There we go. Okay. Then we have, uh, was it two thirds of a cup of half and half milk, what have you. Now, some people don't ask me why some people, they get fat free half and half. Isn't that an oxymoron? Like, how does that make sense? I don't understand it. At any rate. So we have our two thirds of a cup of milk slash half and half and our two and a quarter cups of the Bisquick mix. And I'm just gonna mix this together to create our dough. Now this makes essentially drop biscuits, uh, not the kind that you roll out and you make look all nice and pretty. No, no, this, this is a drop biscuit. Very similar, in fact, to the Easy Cheesy Biscuits that I had done eons ago on this channel. And that is what makes me think of this. You know, just really, really simple. The dough is looking a little bit shaggy. Hopefully this will come together. Now I might use my tried and true method of just getting my hands in there and mixing it by hand because there's still some dry spots. So you know what? Let's do that. All right, so I'm, I'm going in. Cover me. Because <laughs> I want to make, I want to really make sure that this is thoroughly mixed together. Now, when making the the DIY mix, okay, that takes a lot more flour and it's going to make a lot more than what we currently are using. Um, however, I'm sure that you could probably cut the recipe down if you were so inclined. And actually, this is making a, a firmer dough than I had initially thought that it would. You could probably mold this into an actual biscuity shape. All right, now, what does it say? Heat the oven to 425, stir the ingredients until soft dough forms. Yep, we got that. Drop the dough by spoonfuls onto an ungreased cookie sheet. Bake to uh, 10 to 12 minutes or until golden brown. Okay, well, instead of dropping a spoonful because... <laughs> um, all right, now how many does it say that it actually makes? It does not say how many that this is supposed to make. So we are going to eyeball it. So that being said, I have a cookie sheet, but of course it is lined with parchment paper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take half and then take half of the half, half this, and then take these and put them in half and I will do biscuits of this size. Just nice and 
rudimentary. So we're going to end up with eight. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to sort of mold them into biscuity shapes. Now let's get closer to the camera here. So yeah, initially I thought that it was going to be more of like a, a drop biscuit, but no, actually these are very dough oriented. You know, I am not going to roll these out and use cookie cutters and make them look all pretty. No, no, that's not the sake of this experiment, people. So hopefully they will not freak out and spread out too terribly much. Just sort of making like mini hamburger patties, if you will. Now what I'm curious about is, will our DIY mix behave similarly? That is what I'm curious about. You know, will it, will it, will it create the same sort of texture and finished product? Because if it does, well, then great. A whole world of recipes will open up before you. Alrighty. So, have them all nice and evenly placed. A little smushy smushy. And there we go. Let me just wash my hands real quick. Now, I am going to have to wait for the oven to preheat. I should have done that before, but that's okay. And so while these are going to be doing their thing, we're going to make up the DIY Bisquick Mix. Alrighty. Okay, so now for the DIY Bisquick Mix. Okay, so first things first, got my little recipe written down here. We're gonna need six cups of all-purpose flour. So let's get on it, shall we? And I didn't know if I was going to have enough, so I bought an extra bag just in case. You never know. So we got one, and two. And three, now, let me get some more room going on here. Let me mix this up. Okay. So I believe that was three. Yes, we're going golfing. Five, and uh, let me get the other bag real quick. Be right back. All right, so I put in my additional cup of flour. Now, I do need a couple of more things, and then we get to spend however long it's going to take to mix this together, because I don't have access to a food processor that will accommodate 
six cups. So we're gonna do it by hand. All right, so I got my six cups of flour. Now I need a tablespoon of salt. I'm gonna be using iodized salt here. It didn't call for kosher, so we're just using iodized regular table salt. There we go. Okay, get that out of the way so that I don't accidentally use it again. And then three tablespoons of baking powder. Seems like a lot to me, but hey, whatever works. So we've got one. Two, and three. Okay, so now that we got that done, now comes the tricky part, which is mixing in all of the shortening. Now, you could su substitute the shortening for butter. Do not substitute it with oil, though, because it will give a completely different consistency. That I did read. All right, so, got that. So I'm gonna be using Crisco shortening sticks and we need one cup, which apparently one of these, oh, speak of the devil. You know what? Let's get these in the oven. So this was for, let me see. 10 to 12 minutes or golden brown. Okay, so, ooh. Hot, 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 hot. Get in there. All right, so timer, 12. All right, so. I would much rather have things be overdone than underdone. So we're gonna go with 12 minutes. All right, so this is, I believe an entire cup. Yes, okay. So going to cut this up and throw the whole thing in. And this is room temperature, by the way. Oh, this is so oily. Well, what did I expect, right? All right, so it says to cube it. So that is what we're going to do. Essentially. And it is sticky stuff. My gosh, okay, here, here we go. Okay, so it has been officially cubed. Ah, it is so slippery. Okay, now I desperately need to wash my little mitts. Give me one second. We get the joy of trying to make this into a completely homogenous mix. So I'm gonna use a fresh, a fresh spurtle here. And yeah, mix, 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 mix. Um, now what I probably should have done on hindsight, you know, because it is 2020, um, is to mix all of the ingredients together, like whisk them together, make sure that they are all completely mixed first. Didn't do that, but by the time that I am done mixing all of these cubes together, 
that should be done. Actually, you know what? I am very, you know what I'm going to say? I am very tempted to mix this together by hand. It's apparently, it's supposed to resemble cornmeal, I believe it said, uh, by the time you are completely done mixing all of this together. And right now it seems that my clumps of shortening, they are sticking to their guns. They are not breaking up at all, at least not that I can tell. And I don't have one of those sort of dough cutter things. Um, I thought that I did at one point actually, but I cannot seem to find it. And I don't want to use a whisk. So, you know what? I am going in by hand. And because there is so much flour in here, I don't think that my hands are going to get all greasy and funky wonky. So, yeah, I'm just going to mix all of this together by hand. Crumbling it all in. See, it's starting to clump a bit, which actually that's not a bad thing. I think that that's what we're, we're aiming for. So, and also this way, through our tactile senses, we can get an idea of, you know, are there lighter bits in our mix and heavier bits and so on and so forth. So I'm, I'm preferring this method quite frankly. That and, as I've said before, I'm a very, very tactile person. So, you know what, I'm going to mix up this off-camera, the rest of it, until it's completely homogenous, at least as far as I can tell, and we will go from there. All right, so I will see you in a bit. Alrighty, so I mixed together all of these ingredients by hand. Actually, it was not as difficult as I initially thought it was going to be, and it was kind of therapeutic as well. And my biscuits, my Bisquick Bix biscuits, say that five times fast, they're done! Alright, so, uh, gloves. 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 Okay, shush. Shush. There we go. It has been shushed. Oh, ah, that's hot. Okay, my glasses are fogged. I can't even see what I'm looking at. So we have ourselves some biscuits and they are adorable. And, ah, that is hot. Okay, that is very hot. Well, it is 425. Now I'm gonna leave the oven on because now we are going to make our Bisquick biscuits. Okay, so we got our mix here. Uh, I just need to grab my half and half, not a problem. All right, so again, two and a quarter cups. So just going in right in. One. two and a quarter. Okay, there we go. And then it is two thirds of a cup. So let's do this real quick. Where is that two-thirds cut mark? There it is. Okay. Put this back in the fridge. And let us see how these turn out. I have no idea if this is going to work or not. Did the internet lie to us? I don't know. We are going to find out. So, 
Let's start mixing this all up together. And yes, I am using the same bowl. I did clean it out. So, so far it appears to be the same so far. And yes, I am probably going to go in by hand because that's how I roll. Because you know me, I cannot leave well enough alone Oh, it's cold. You know, uh, it's a, it seems to be perhaps a bit wetter, but then again, I haven't completely mixed it together. But yeah, so far it, it feels identical to my non-culinary trained hands. It, it feels the same, quite frankly. Okay, and it's holding together just like our original. Very much the same feel and texture. Trying to knead it about the same that I did with the first batch. Not too much, not too little, just right. All right, so then again, I'm gonna separate it into eights, so Yes, I am approximating here. Okay, and then have that. And this one. That one. And this one. Okay, get you over on the side, and then a little patty cake. Well, patty biscuit, anyway. <laughs> All right, so just going to sort of form these into cute little biscuity shapes. Yeah, we're, we're strictly going with approximations here, but hey, the measurements are the same, though. But so far, yeah, it feels identical as far as the tactile quality. It feels identical to what we just did as far as the texture and the quantity and so forth. So I don't know. We'll find out. You know, the, the real test at the end will be the taste. Gotta do the taste test. It is obligatory. I can't just say, oh, look at this pretty thing I made. No, we have to taste it. Because if it was if it was awful, I want you to know if it was awful or not. Okay, so give these cute little guys a little smoosh. Quick rinse. Okay, so I'm gonna pop these in now for, again, 12 minutes because we're going for accuracy. Okay, timer, 12. Yep, timer. There we go. All right, so. While those are baking, I'm going to clean up this mess because there is flour everywhere. <laughs> All right, so I will see you when those are done, and we will do the taste test. See you in a bit. All right, so my biscuits are done. <laughs> and, oh, ah, okay, ah, stop, cancel, okay. I need another of these. Yep. Seriously? Stop. Stop. Thank you. <laughs> oh, technology. Yay. 
All right, so these should be done. Ah! Okay, they look, they, they do seem a bit different, actually. Interestingly enough. Hmm. Okay, this is an interesting development right out of the gate. Now, obviously we haven't test, ow, ow, ow. <laughs> we haven't tasted these yet, but. Okay, there is obviously a difference in appearance. Interesting. Hmm. And I did the exact same thing, more or less. Okay. All right, so obviously I can't go based on the visual, but we can go based on the taste. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to let these cool off for a bit so that I do not burn my face off, and then we will do the taste test. All righty, so for the moment of truth, the moment I've been waiting for ever since I thought that this would make an interesting video. All right, so here we have the Bisquick biscuits, and they're very shapely. They're very, they're very photogenic. They're very attractive. And then we have our DIY biscuits. Now these are a lot more. I guess you would use the word like crenellated or bumpy or what have you. They look a lot more organic, if you will. Um, but you can't go based on looks alone, which is why, of course, we're going to do the taste test. Also, another thing that I notice is that if you compare them, these browned a bit more. You know, they are a bit more golden brown. Same exact amount of time and temperature and so forth, but I don't know if you can see it very well, but these definitely have a bit more color. Um, so I don't know if that's any indication, but we are going to find out. So... For our first victim, we have ourselves a Bisquick biscuit. And because I can't just eat a biscuit, no, I gotta add some butter, you know, forgive me. So this is just regular salted butter. I mean, I can eat just a regular biscuit, but seriously, so. It's a biscuit. Oh, it does the trick. And considering how simple and easy it is to make these, yeah, it's worth it. You know, uh, do I like the, the canned biscuits more? Yes. Um, but yeah, it's a biscuit. It does the trick. It's a nice side to a meal. It's light. It's flaky. Tastes good. Yeah, okay. Victim number two. Okay, so this is with our DIY mix. Actually, let me just scrape that off there. So the consistency, the texture does seem to be the same. Scoop you right there. Just add a little bit of butter. A little bit more. And moment of truth. Okay. I'm having trouble distinguishing one from another. They are like, they're like this, you know, they are very, 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 very similar. So you know what? 
Oh gosh darn, I have to try again. <laughs> oh no. Whatever will I do? All right, so we've got our DIY next to our name brand. All right, so again, back to the name brand. Okay, DIY. They're both delicious. They're both very, very simple to make. And now I've got a ton of biscuits. <laughs> Which is fine with me because I do love a good biscuit. So, great. Okay, so that answers the question. What do you do if you do not have Bisquick either available, you know, because people went on a buying spree or because it's just not available in your country? Ta-da! So, of course, I'm going to have the uh, ingredients for this recipe in the description box down below, naturally. It's really easy. And so the rest of this, I have this much left. So I can make a few batches of biscuits just with this alone. Now, because it has shortening in it and it's been combined with other ingredients, yes, keep this in the fridge. Yes, so you wanna do that. And uh, I'm, I'm good on biscuits for a while. So try it, you might like it. I. I groove on it. You know, I think that this is, you know, really quite tasty and easy and right up my alley. You know, it's just Bisquick mix and milk. That's it. So give it a whirl. Now, always, as always, I'm curious, have you tried a DIY Bisquick mix yourselves? What was your outcome? Always curious to hear about your input in the comments section, as always. And I really hope that this was informative and helpful to you guys because never do I want to do a video where one of the main components is totally inaccessible to you. So that's a good reason why I did this video. That and I was curious and, you know, it's through experimentation that we grow as people and I encourage that for everybody every day. Hmm. So with that being said, listen everybody, Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give a little thumbs up button down below because you know that I appreciate your appreciation. And you know what to do until next time. Stay inspired. Stay baking. Stay making. Stay shaking. <laughs> stay safe. Take care of yourselves and each other. And I will see you in my next video. Have a great day, everybody. Bye for now.